Hello, everyone. For those coming in, uh, welcome to the Black Students in Engineering live chat for USC Viterbi School of Engineering, where you can give everyone a chance to kind of just filter in throughout. So uh, sit tight. We'll get this chat started in just a couple of minutes while everyone is still logging on and getting their audio connected. So just hang tight and we'll start in a bit. So Victoria, you just celebrated a birthday. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, it was funny. I was in, I think I told you already, but I was in Malibu, which is a beach. Malibu is so pretty. Over yeah. here. It's nice. Yeah, it was pretty. Like for some reason, the sun's supposed to set in the west, but it was not in the west. It was like north. So we couldn't <laughs> see it. Which I'm like, I feel like like that scared me. I was like, I feel like something's wrong with like the earth. It's out of alignment. <laughs> why out of alignment. <laughs> Something is definitely wrong with the earth. It's, yeah. that's, it's not setting correctly. Were you in the upside yeah, that's down? Definitely problematic. Yeah, I was like, this is not supposed to happen. <laughs> it was fun. It was nice. <laughs> did you did you even see anything? It was nice. I saw like the sky. The sky was still like a nice sunset color. I just didn't see like the horizon because it was in the mm. north. But mm. nice. The sky. The sky did it for you. The sky is nice. What did you guys do this weekend? I went back home just like yesterday, but that was, it was just like a day trip. So that was it. Watched a lot of football yesterday. Watched a lot of football today. Took a lot of time. Yeah. Close. Did you watch the USC game? Yeah. It was, it was, was, it was crazy. Probably Sierra Wright with the pick. <laughs> it was beautiful. It was beautiful. That was yeah. insane. Yeah. I didn't even get a chance to watch it, but I just remember keeping up with the score. I was like, why are we still down going into fourth quarter? No, and then I was like, back. At PTSD, my sophomore year, we were fourth quarter. Even my freshman year, fourth quarter team. Never, never could win. Always down like 20 going to the fourth quarter and destroy them coming back. So that's USC football for you. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, it looks like we've got uh People still coming in. It looks like we're kind of leveling off right now. So I'm going to go ahead and kick things started, uh, kick things off and get things started. So um, for those interested, uh, thank you for uh, waiting. Just want to get everyone connected. Welcome to the Black Students in Engineering live chat for the Viterbi School of Engineering. I want to thank you all for coming out tonight. Uh, this live chat is put on for you, for the benefit of you guys, brought to you by us, real life engineering students who many of us weren't in your shoes not that long ago. So we definitely know what it's like to be a black student, to be applying to college and just looking for answers to some of the questions you have. Before I move on, I do wanna thank the panelists for taking times out of their Sunday to join us. As I mentioned a little earlier, midterm season is coming up. I know I have one on Wednesday and I'm sure that all these amazing people still have midterms come up themselves. So I wanna thank them for taking out the time to you know, answer these questions and uh, talk to you guys for a little bit. Uh, we'll go ahead and get started by taking a look at our agenda for this evening. First and foremost, we're going to meet the panelists um, and get to know a little bit about them as they're the ones who are going to be answering your questions this evening. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and get into the meat of our chat this evening, which is the Q&A section, where you guys get to ask us live questions and just get our honest opinions about USC, the Turby, engineering, the Black experience, all of it. Everything's pretty much on the table. After that takes up the bulk of our time this evening, we'll then uh, give you guys a chance to learn a little more about studying engineering from Black Viterbi students, some resources that we have on campus that are integral to our experience, as well as how to stay connected with the Viterbi admissions office, as well as us Viterbi students and the content we produce. Now I'll go ahead and get into some intros. So my name is Cameron. I'll be the host for the chat this evening. I am a senior studying computer science and business administration. And I'm originally from Chicago, Illinois. On campus, I'm involved with USC's National Society of Black Engineers, also known as NSBE, where I'm the current chapter senator for this year. Additionally, I'm the vice president for the Alpha Delta chapter of Alpha Pi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, and I'm also the vice president for USC's chapter of the National Panhellenic Council, which oversees all of the eight of the nine divine nine organizations for black students here at USC's campus. Additionally, I'm a member of our Global Investing Society through the Marshall School of Business, and I'm a freshman academy coach, which essentially is like a teaching assistant slash mentor for the Turbies Engineering Freshman Academy that all students take in the fall. Hello, everyone. I'm Victoria. I'm a junior studying mechanical engineering, and I'm from Inglewood, California. Um, on campus, I'm involved in the National Society of Black Engineers. I'm a member of USC's chapter, and then I'm also involved on the regional level. I'm also part of the Turby Makers, which is a team-based electronics club on campus, and I conduct undergraduate research with the Haptics Robotics and Virtual Interaction Lab. 
Hey everyone, my name is Javon. I'm a junior from Mount Laurel, New Jersey, uh, studying computer science and business administration. Uh, this picture here is probably from when I was <laughs> in your seat uh, applying yeah. to schools, but uh, on campus, my, my involvements are through the National Society of Black Engineers. Um, I'm serving as the president for this year, uh, BSA or Black Student Assembly, and then I'm a consultant through the Business Technology Group. Hey everyone, I'm Kaylee. I'm from Bakersfield, California, and I'm a sophomore studying astronautical engineering. Um, some of my involvements here on campus include USC's Rocket Propulsion Lab. I do research at CERC, which is the Space Engineering Research Center, and I work on CubeSats, um, and I am also part of NSBE. And then hi everyone, my name is Taylor. I'm from Gainesville, Florida. I'm a sophomore studying computer science, and my pronouns are she, her, hers. Awesome. So thank you to our lovely panelists and moderator for introducing themselves, getting a chance to you guys to know them a little bit. So now comes the meat of the, tonight's conversation, which is the Q&A portion. So everyone, if you guys go down to that bottom taskbar on Zoom, you'll see the Q&A feature. And that's where you guys can input your questions. So anything you guys have or want to know from us about our experience, this is the time to do it. So please throw all your questions in there and we'll just get them as the night rolls on and get to answer some of those questions. Um, so yeah, while that gets started, I'm gonna just kind of start us off with just, you know, interesting question for us. Um, it seems like we do have a uh, decent, some little bit variety of uh, majors. So I just want to get started with you guys and understanding, you know, why did you decide um, on your major and why did you pick it? What made you think that it was the right fit for you? Um, I can get started on this one. Um, for me, I always knew I wanted to do something in engineering or like science related, um, like all throughout high school, because I just like was interested in math and science. Um, so after going to a couple of like engineering summer camps throughout high school, I like got it down to either like civil um, or aerospace, which are very different. I don't know why I was interested in those two, but um, I decided that I wanted to go space because I wanted to one, do research and two, I didn't want to be bored. Um, and so I feel like space isn't boring and it's like very undiscovered. So I wouldn't, I knew that I would be able to constantly be learning new things and the field would be evolving while I was in it. Yeah, for me, I definitely did not know like until very late what major I wanted to apply to. I was between mechanical and electrical engineering and kind of biomedical, but I really hated biology. So I had to, I had to let that go. But I was between mechanical and electrical mainly. And I was just, I thought about um, things in engineering that I was interested in, you know, whether it was cars, roller coasters, phones. And when I looked into kind of what engineers work on in those devices and what they work on, I found that I was really interested in the mechanical aspects of them, like structural analysis, et cetera. I love forces, I love forces in high school. So I decided to go with mechanical. And then another thing that really helped me was I was able to look at the course plan for each of the majors and like check out all the courses I'd be taking. And I kind of decided based on that, I was like, yeah, I don't want to do electrical. So that's how I decided. I guess for myself, I'm fairly indecisive. Um, so as I was kind of thinking about what I wanted to do and what I wanted to study, um, I saw this option of computer science and business. And, you know, part of the reason why I chose this major was because of the fact that it was a little outside of engineering, but I'll stick to like the more engineering piece of this answer. Um, being that computer science I saw had like a lot of opportunity. Um, you could go in software engineering and, and do that kind of hard code. You're doing CS, um, or you can apply the, the technical experience that you have from a CS degree in a bunch of other places. So I liked having those options um, and, and the fact that I wasn't locking myself into too much um, early on. But on top of that, just gathered some interest through high school courses and, and other summer programs in uh, computer science and suck with it. Awesome. Yeah, for me, I had an interesting thing. Like I started off as mechanical engineering um, and then I ended up switching my major in the middle of a global pandemic. Not sure if I'd recommend that. Um, I took my first computer science class and I ended up liking it. And I kind of always knew I wanted to do something business related. Um, 
But something I guess like I kind of realized in hindsight is that, you know, I really enjoyed like coding and computer science and the business aspect of it. But I also did enjoy like optimization, like making things efficient. And I, I really feel like it was kind of a toss up me, toss up for me between computer science and business and industrial and systems engineering with like the system track, which focused on a lot more programming. Cause I think like in a lot of ways, they're like basically very similar majors. Um, just because, you know, they're related to, like, you do have some programming and some computer science aspects in both. And there's also a good amount of economics, whereas, like, I take economics in, like, the business school. There's, like, engineering economics, where all of your problems are, like, focused on, like, manufacturing or, like, cost things and whatnot. So um, it's definitely interesting there. Um, and I wasn't, you know, it kind of was a toss-up, but in the end, I ended up picking computer science. And I've, you know, enjoyed it a decent amount. A decent amount. <laughs> I, I'd say, I'd say so. I mean, do you, I see, I mean, Javon feels like, you know, you enjoyed it, um, you know, a good amount, right? Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, as another quick note um, about the live chat before we continue, um, the Q&A section within um, the live chats, uh, there's a, a feature called upvoting. So in this case, if you see a question that you really think is a good question, you like to get it answered, you know, push it up to the top so we can see it better. Uh, make sure you click that upvote button. Um, it allows us to see the questions up top. And so maybe if there's a, a question that has like, you know, like 10 plus upvotes, you're like, oh, we should answer that right away. So make sure to do that. We're going to try to get to all the questions, but we want to make sure the questions everyone are kind of agreeing on that are really important get leveled up to the top. So again, just if you want to uh, upvote them, make sure just click the Q&A box and uh, send them up there. Um, so kind of going away um, for, you know, towards majors and like kind of towards like the experience on campus, you know, uh, some people want to know like what your freshman experience was like. So, you know, what was um, your freshman experience like as USC? And you can even also expand on this into what was the freshman experience like for black students at USC? Kaylee, this one's on you because we did not have- Yeah, <laughs> yeah I can't. Um, I get, so last year was my freshman year. Um, and it was interesting because it was coming back from COVID. So it was still in person and everything, but like very limited um, in the amount of things that we could do. Um, we had like tests every week and there was all this stuff, but um, my freshman experience was really good because there were so many, immediately there were so many resources. Um, I got to take like my freshman academy, like engineering class, which I know Cameron is like one of like the mentors for that, like one of the coaches, um, which was really great because I got to meet a lot of students in Viterbi, um, just like taking that class every week. And then I also got to do my intro class my first semester. So I got to do my um, intro to ast <clears throat> intro astronautical engineering class, which is really cool that you get to like sort of be immersed in your major like right off the bat. Um, so you can like know pretty early on if it's something that you would actually be interested in. Um, before you get like too far and then you realize that you don't like it anymore um and then like socially and like within clubs and everything i was able to like meet so many different like black students here um just like at like the center for black students so, like hanging out in there doing my homework there because i would go there a lot during lunch and just like do work and to like, meet new people um it was i mean i guess it is a little bit of a culture shock sort of kind of not really like being in class and you being like the only black student in there um but I was still able to find like a couple of black friends in engineering and like do work together which was really nice um I know there's like even less black students in my major specifically so finding being able to find students even outside of my major like within mechanical that we still have similar classes but not all the same was really really helpful so I think it was a really excellent experience overall for sure. And actually, like, I'm going to expand this question just because my freshman experience was a long time ago. I'm a bit of an old man. Uh, so talk about your experience first coming to USC, like or first getting to the campus. Was there any culture shock? Uh, Kaylee, you mentioned culture shock about it. So this gives a chance for, you know, the COVID, the, the COVID online freshman to also talk about, you know, that experience. Because coming to campus for the first time, regardless of if you're a freshman or a sophomore, certainly is an experience. So just talk about that. Was there a culture shock? How did you find it? Okay. Yeah. You know, I, I guess I have like sort of an interesting take on this because uh, coming from New Jersey and the area that I was, there weren't too many black people. So like I was kind of used to being one of the only few in, in my classes, um, which sort of stayed the same. Um, but at the same time, like one of the, the, the culture shocks that I had was more of in the positive light. Like I've never been part of like a, such a tight knit black community where 
this is again across like more than just engineering, but across the entire school. Um, so many people are going to BSA meetings. We have a strong Nesby community. There's events that the black community is throwing all the time um, that I had never really gotten the chance to be a part of up until coming to campus. Um, so I think depending on where you're coming from, it's going to be different. Um, but the 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 difference that I saw was was one that was more welcoming than I I guess I thought it could have been, um, and was excited to have a community like that. Yeah, like going off what Javon said, like I'm from Bakersfield, but I'm from a part Bakersfield that's like there's a less black, like there's not a very large like black population. So like, I mean, it's a relatively small town. So I did have like a lot of black friends, but not specifically in my classes. So like having a community and I also took advanced classes. So there was like even less in my AP classes. So coming to a community where there's like a lot of like really like ambitious and intelligent African-American students that like you can surround yourself with by going to events like Nesby. Like I had never seen that many black people interested in engineering in one room. So that was also a very positive culture shock for me. Yeah, for me, I'm from Inglewood, which if you don't know, is like six miles away, six miles south of USC. So I definitely like been in the area, known the campus before. But one thing that I did want to plug and add to this question is VSI, which is Viterbi Summer Institute, which is a program that the Center for Engineering Diversity runs every summer. It's basically for incoming freshmen. freshmen you get a chance to meet other underrepresented minorities in engineering and in your major. You get to do research. And then you also like take like a math and coding class. I really enjoyed that experience. Mine was online, but I hear it's, it's really good in person. Like maybe going to field trips and stuff. I was <laughs> like, yes, you guys are having fun. But yeah, that was a great experience, a great time. I got I met a lot of people in my major and a lot of the friends I have now during that program. So it was great. Yeah, and I can kind of say for me, I, I was also part of the Viterbi Summer Institute. Uh, mine was summer 2019. So again, a very long time ago, um, but they're pretty much the same thing. You get a chance to stay in a USC dorm. So I stayed in like USC's burn cramp, the eight floors of open doors, if that's still what they're calling it now. Um, and okay, see, I said, I don't feel that old. If they're not, that's correct. Uh, but yeah, I got a chance to stay there and it was with, um, both black and Latinx and like uh, native American, and other like historically, um, minority, uh, historically minoritized individuals and students. So that was a really good experience for me. Um, just because, you know, I was able to meet other students and, you know, really get a chance to kind of adjust to like both being at USC, but not quite all the way, just plopped in the environment. Cause it was still a lot of, uh, students from, you know, Variety of backgrounds. Like for hindsight, I went to a high school um, from the south side of Chicago where it was predominantly black students going to the high school. So this very much felt like um, you know, a home, like away from home, sort of in that sense. Um, so it kind of it made the transition a lot easier there. Uh, now there's something I wanted to also bring up. There's a question in the chat um, from Constance. It's about the Somerville residential floor. So none of us have lived in the, the Somerville residential floor, but I've done a lot of work with the students there. And like, I know a lot of people there. So I did kind of just want to take a second to talk about it. So for those of you who don't know, Somerville residential floor is a first and really a second year program where um, black students can essentially select to live in this dorm community. So it's moved dorm since the old dorm there. It doesn't exist anymore, but essentially Somerville is more of an idea than a place anyway. It's a floor on one of the freshman dorms that's just, you know, um, for black students. They have a black RA. They have, you know, a variety of black suite mates and uh, roommates there. And they plan a variety of Somerville events. And I think that a lot of people who I've talked to on Somerville, they say it provides a really good transition just because they know that, like, we go to a PWI, you know, you're surrounded by a variety of students from backgrounds, many of which aren't black. And Somerville really kind of provides that space where you come home and you have, you know, built in students and built in friends where you guys are all the same. You guys kind of understand each other. There's no like, you don't, you know, you don't have to explain certain things. Like I know when I go to sleep and I, you know, you have a satin pillowcase, you don't have to explain to someone, you know, why do you have a satin pillowcase? Like people just get it. It's like, yeah, I certainly get one. I have one too. Like, and so that's a really, um, you know, a really good community that a lot of people have found, you know, really good friends in there and it, and it just kind of helps them get that sort of like certain, um, you know, standard like friendship um, built right there. So it's definitely a great resource. And I, by no means, like if you're not in this uh, floor, that doesn't mean you're not ingrained into the black community. I know I certainly, a lot of us weren't, and we're still, you know, go to the black student assembly and have plenty of friends within the community, but it's just another way to stay involved and, you know, get, you know, kind of uh, acquainted with that sort of um, experience there. And there also is a second year program too. So if you want to, there's a second year um, Somerville students. So say you like the people you live with, you want to live with them again. 
you can go to that second year again. And so people find that that community is really great. The RAs tend to be like really lifelong mentors there as well. So it's definitely a good resource that they have. And we're actually lucky to have um, a program like that at USC. So even though we didn't participate in it, um, definitely it's a cool program. So kind of speaking uh, in that vein, um, you know, I wanted to ask just, you know, about like your in your classroom support, um, you know, coming from diverse backgrounds, like we obviously have a little bit of a different experience. So can you guys talk about some of the resources that you guys have, you know, found um, in order to help you guys with, uh, you know, your engineering studies at USC? And also kind of with that, do you feel like you've been offered, you know, more or less or the same like resource and opportunities as other students? I think I'll make the first Nesby plug of the night, um, assuming that there won't be any more. But um, through through Nesby, there's this program that uh, that we put on called Study Nights, um, which is, I mean, exactly what the name describes. Basically, just a week or a night every week where anybody can come in, work on stuff in your classes. Um, if there's people together or in your major or anything like that, um, just really providing a good space to to get things done. Um, and and just having a community like Nesby in general, you're going to meet people that took that class last semester or took it two years ago um, that are going to know how to best give you advice and how to um, give any tips that they can to help you best succeed. So, I mean, this is specific to, to I, th this is a specific answer, but once you find a community like that, um, there's so many people in that community that are willing to help you out. Yeah, and I'll definitely say, definitely Nesby is a great one. And then Viterbi also has a bunch of programs that it offers to all of its students. Um, I know one is there's like a Viterbi learning program um, where you can find tutors for your classes that were that are Viterbi students that have taken the class before. I know I used that last year because I was I was struggling <laughs> in this one class. And then also for um, like your math classes and your science classes, there's something called supplemental instruction which is also a student who has taken the class before and they'll run like reviews like for just homework and topics in general, but also for midterms and the final, they'll do that weekly. Those are also a great resource where you can review the material with people in your class and just ask more questions. Yeah, like adding on to all those resources. Um, also there's like the math center or like the writing center. Um, so like you can go to the math center to obviously get help on math and then at the writing center they can read any of like your essays or anything and give you advice. Um, so there's like a lot of support you just have to go seek it. Um, and a lot of clubs like Nesby, it, even like any other clubs will also have like different study nights, especially during midterms and finals. Yeah, another plug, did you guys talk about CED by chance? Mention it? No. Okay. So I, I will be the CED plug for the night. So CED stands for the Center for Engineering University. Um, it's a, like kind of an umbrella like office within USC Viterbi that houses a variety of programs for underrepresented students and engineers, whether this is Black students, Latinx students, Native students, or even women just in general, just because they are underrepresented engineering. Um, it's a really great resource and a place that I found provides a lot of resources. They're the people who put on the Viterbi Summer Institute. So that program, like they provide funding for it. So it's actually really great in that case. Um, and it's just been, it's a really great study space to meet other students, provide mentorship. I know, and I think they're still doing it. Like they have uh, tutors from Intel, the company that Intel sponsors people and they pay people to be tutors. So one, if you like to tutor, you can get a job to other people. And two, if you need free tutoring, this is literally um, a free, like, or a free resource. And it's like, there's someone says, hey, I'm really struggling in my status class, right? Maybe there's a tutor from Intel who, you know, the Intel sponsored tutor who hey, I, I like, I got an A in statics, I'm willing to help you. Direct tutoring right there. And it's typically pretty, pretty free and available. And I feel like that's a really cool resource because there's a variety of other tutoring resources, but this is like right here, it's in a nice building. You're, you know, it's like vetted because of students who use it, um, you know, through the Center for Engineering University. So it's a great place to provide good resources. And also there are snacks in their room and it's a nice study space too, which is pretty rare to come by, so. That's nice. Um, additionally, there were a, there's another question um, about social clubs. So the question is from Noah. It says, what are some of the Black student social clubs? And is it easy to get to know other students of color at USC? I would say, like, I mean, again, with some of the things that we already mentioned, Nesby, BSA, uh, I'd say BSA especially is a good way to connect with people that are like, I mean, again, just Black students across campus. Um, there's also like 
clubs that'll be for every sort of interest that you have, whether it's outside of engineering or whatever it is. Um, I know there's like black accountants, black in business, things like that. Um, so if, if there are any other interests, there's usually a lot of professional societies. Um, anybody else want to tackle social clubs? I think Javon kind of got us talking about the Black yeah. Student Assembly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'd say for me, like, I think, um, I don't know, like, there's like, there's definitely like, a social scene on there. Like, for example, if there's like, you know, it depends on what you're interested in. If you're like, if you're interested in like a variety of like extracurricular social functions, um, you know, there are certainly organizations that put those on and societies that put those on, um, you know, and like, there's some that are, you know, gendered, some that are not. Um, like there's like a couple of like new societies for like women um you know there's and there's like a variety of there's like within like nesby there was like there's called like system i'm not sure if we're still doing that it was like a partnership with like usc and stanford and it was like women and women like a non-binary and them identifying students like in stem talking about their experience um, providing them a, a space for those marginalized students um so i feel like there's like a variety of other spaces also like i feel like as far as like clubs are concerned i mean like, honestly i just kind of go to um you know my normal clubs and like it's kind of that unspoken thing it's like there's a club and there's not many people when i see someone and we kind of look at each other and give them the nod <laughs> kind of talk to them afterwards even in class too like you just kind of make those connections just because you know it's like hey we're a minority at school like it's just kind of the way it is and you recognize people and like honestly that's how some of my closest friends have been made you know like oh you know are my class and you know hey i sat next to you what's your name oh you're a freshman like okay i'm a senior like literally happened this year now we're in my study group i see him around campus like he comes to nesby meetings um so you know things like that so even though there's a lot of like formal activities like bsa like nesby and nesby's also social too don't get me wrong we literally like just had a barbecue a couple weeks ago so <laughs> it's, it's definitely a social club uh there's like a lot of like just casual ways to meet people and people are pretty open and friendly um not to mention like you want to find other students call like ship is a great way to do it also just staying posted up in ced like you just meet people um, yeah and then another thing, I was thinking about this earlier, I forgot, but I remember now, is USC has a, I always mess up the name, so if I mess it up, it's the Center for Black Students Cultural Students and Cultural Affairs. It's yes. something like that. <laughs> the Center <laughs> for I, Black it, Cultural and Student Affairs. Yeah, there you go. Yes. Um, and that's in our student union. And that's also a great study space. I go over there sometimes between classes. They have snacks there too. So whenever I'm hungry, I go over there and just hang out but that's a great place it's less structured but there's always lots of black students there you can just talk chill they play good music they're good vibes so study space is questionable because i can never get work done in there however <laughs> good because you're always socializing you and meeting focused, new people and talking you gotta be determined yeah. no yeah the energy is so great there i've definitely also taken a really good nap there so yeah they do have like if you do need to study though, there's like, we have like, like, th like three, like nap, like, you know, kind of like things you can kind of lay out there and like lay down and there's like, but there's dividers in there. So if you like put your headphones on and just concentrate, like people know not to bother you. So you can't get your work done, but <laughs> it's not the study space you think it is because you're going in there, you're going to see someone, you know, or someone's going to say something, or you're going to hear someone having some sort of debate and be like, wait, I have to get in on this. So <laughs> yeah. that's get in on it. Yeah. Now, I don't know why I they think of this. Put my headphones on in there. So many conversations. Most time I go, that, that's kind of like our like hangout spot or like, I don't know. I feel like when I go in there, I probably have a good time. Um, yeah. Let's see. So uh, in addition, like to, you know, like we talked about some social things, but I kind of want to like ask, you know, a question about just the engineering experience and coming to high school, like coming from high school to college. I know it's a lot of students are happening. Like, did you have any reservations about going into engineering school, being a black student, being a black woman in engineering? Um, you know, I was just curious. Yeah, I definitely had a lot of reservations. You know, when I was applying to schools, I'd always look at like the diversity percentages just for interest. And then like I would look at them and be like, well, that's not for the engineering school, that's for the school as a whole. And it's also like, <laughs> so it'd be like, oh, there's 10% Black people and I'm in engineering and I'm also a woman. I was like, I don't think it's gonna be that good. So I was definitely scared. And I think that's one of the reasons that I chose USC um, in general is just because when I came to visit the campus and when I talked to students, I could tell that they had a really solid and supportive community there. And I knew that that was something I wanted regardless of the numbers, like what they're looking like. I just wanted a community that I felt could support me and like wanted to see me succeed. And I definitely found that I could have that 
at USC. If I'm being honest, I feel like I didn't even get the chance to like worry too much. Um, by the time it was like school was coming around, VSI was starting. So like already I felt supported, um, which I think was just like applies to a lot of the experience. Like there's so many um, resources and just like people that want to support you that um, whenever like I've felt a little out of place, just naturally, I, I feel like I'll, I'll get support that's coming in. Um, so I, I really, again, haven't really felt like I've gotten the chance to feel too uncomfortable. Yeah, there's almost like <clears throat> there's almost like too many resources um, and they constantly like, email you and throw them at you, um, which is, I guess, better than nothing because it's but you always have someone to reach out to or something that you can like get access to if you're not feeling supported. So, yeah, like Javon said, it's you're not uncomfortable for a long time. Yeah, I'd say some like I know like coming into the classes like, you know, um, like this, the state of like diversity affairs at USC has definitely gotten better since I got since I came here. Uh, 2019 was an interesting time. It was uh, <laughs> but like I, I was a little concerned. I was like, all right, like it's a new experience. Like, OK, yes, I'm glad to be an engineer, but there's like not that many people in my mechanical engineering class who are like black. Like this is very weird. It's like three of us. And like luckily I, that's not the case anymore because like I see like I see someone like Nesby it just has like like so many members now it's like 60 plus members like on any given uh like Monday so there's a lot of people now I'm um, across the variety of majors that's not even people who come that's just people who come like there's so many more people who um would you know go there but I guess my main concern was like fitting in like socially and honestly I really didn't have that much of an issue with it I think that you know coming to the class like I was able to find study groups and work with people some of which were black some of which were not black from a variety of backgrounds and it never really hindered me so I feel like there's a lot of research helping you get along there but also it's like the social scene was concerned I really didn't have that much of an issue like fitting in like I have friends from a variety of backgrounds and you know friends from engin other engineering clubs and other clubs in general and it didn't really matter you know um, like my background. So I feel like that kind of made me feel um, a little better. Uh, so I have a question that's been uploaded in the chat. Thank you guys for using the upload features from Cameron. Shout out to the best name ever, Cameron Brown, yeah. CV. Uh, so he asked a question about black faculty member. Are there black faculty members who can uplift and relate to students? Um, I have an answer to this. If you guys don't have an answer, I'm more than happy to share, but I want to open it up to you guys first. I think you should start. Sure. Yeah. So if we're being completely frank, um, I personally, um, I'm way, like, there's like one class that like is notoriously known for having a great black faculty. It's literally a class called Black Social Movements in the US. It's like a, um, it's a general education class that I'm waiting to take. Um, and like, for, for besides that, I think there's like a couple of a handful of classes for the engineering student, like uh, places that are like taught by black faculty. I'm not sure of all of them off the top of my head, just because there's no like directory for black faculty. Uh, but I'd say that, you know, if you like, like going around and like seeing black faculty members, like, you know, I think that there certainly is a different level of um, like understanding when it comes to it. Um, like, I know, like, if I'm in there, like, the former, uh, it was like the dean for like diversity operations, her name was uh, Dean Brandy Jones. I know, like, she would be in, um, you know, the Center for Engineering University, like, even like, she's a, you know, prominent black faculty member, like the first of her uh, position at USC. And like, she was just such a great resource just to talk to, you know, it wasn't necessarily like, oh, I'm like coming here to find something. It's like, hey, you know, I just talked to you about what's been going on. And she kind of had like open door, like just able to talk to her. She worked really hand in hand with the Viterbi Summer Institute. Um, and I think that like, she was someone who I can definitely say was like, you know, willing, ready to uplift you and just kind of talk to you about things and kind of educate you about, you know, what's going on here. You know, if you have an issue or a question and you need some uplift, you need some, you know, hey, like I get where you're coming from, you know, can you help me like solve this issue? She's definitely one of those people. And I can say that in just going around and seeing like a variety of black, um, you know, faculty members who are in a variety of positions in the university, they've been like really nothing but welcoming to me. I found someone who was a part of my same fraternity just by wearing some of my fraternity paraphernalia. And like he took me out, he took me some of my fraternity brothers out to the, um, the uh, like university club that's like really swanky lunch place and just like gave us his business card and said, if you need any resources or contacts with like the university uh, at large, you know, feel free to reach out. So I definitely had good experience with black faculty members to say the least. I, I feel like the unfortunate answer to this question is that there's not that many in engineering. Um, that class that Cameron, met, that Cameron mentioned specifically, I am in this semester, the black social movements, um, great professor. And like, I, I think, Again, sort of the piece is that a lot of the um, the black faculty is teaching like black related courses. Um, but if you get a chance to take those courses, they always end up being pretty great. That's what I add to it. <laughs> 
Yeah. And like, for example, like this year, I'm actually kind of mad. I like switched my schedule around to take it. But one of my classes was technology entrepreneurship. It's like one of those like joint USC, um, like Viterbi and Marshall classes. And it's taught by a black faculty member. She's like an adjunct professor. She said, so I'm like the board of executives for, for some tech company. Like I have no, I, I have no idea who was, I like read the bio very shortly, but um, you know, she's another professor. Like she's through the business school. So sometimes it may be through like other electives that you take through other schools. Um, but Javon's kind of right. The faculty at like USC, Viterbi specifically, isn't that strong with the black community, but they do. And there's other like ways to get in contact and see black faculty, and they certainly relate. I know like there's a black faculty member who teaches the Engineering Freshman Academy. He's like seated at the School of um, or the School of Engineering and the School of Education. So he's another great member, and like he's a great teacher as well because like his entire thing is teacher. Um, it's like to be a teacher, so it's very cool there. Awesome, Victoria, Kaylee, anything else? Or I think we kind of got it. <laughs> Yeah, you got it. You said what I was going to say. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. So let's see. Um, here's an interesting question about like the Black community. Um, this is from Barham. I'm sorry, I didn't want to butcher your name. Uh, they ask about, you know, do you think the Black community in engineering is broad? Um, I guess in terms of like, you know, like what have you seen from like the experience, like talking to you know people in the Black community? Like, do you, would you say like there's a like, good amount of diversity or they're just all like CS heads? Like, you know, like being coached since they were 12. Like, what do you guys think about it? I think that it's pretty broad. Like, I think you can find several Black students in every major. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I haven't really thought about that. That's a good question. Yeah, that's a good question. That's definitely something that I haven't thought about. I will say, like, there's definitely more people in some majors than others. See, lots of people have switched to CS on this channel. <laughs> you haven't even started out in CS, but I would definitely say like, that's one of the, the main ones. And then like, it kind of spreads out from there. But like, also like, just in terms of personality, like in terms of story, I would definitely say that there's a lot of diversity from like locations, um, like, whether pe where people grew up, how they grew up at USC, um, just in general. Like a lot of the people, I think half of us aren't from California on this panel. So I would definitely say like, you're gonna meet a lot of people with different life experiences in the black community. It's not like everyone's the same exact person from the same place. Awesome. I think I think Javon might be having a bit of uh, technical difficulties, but I sure he has some insights to say about it. Um, so let's see, Javon, are you still with us? Okay, I think he's not coming on the mind. So we're gonna keep moving. Uh, hopefully, Javon can get it connect. Trust me, uh, technical issues happen happen a lot more frequently than <laughs> imagine. One live chat, just like the power went out for all of Los Angeles for like five minutes. Um, <laughs> And we were all confused. This is like fall, my, my junior year, we were just very confused. Um, so definitely happens sometimes, like just to, you know, sometimes it just happens like randomly. Um, there's one question in the chat uh, about Tamara. Um, and so she asked like, it's a it's a long, a little bit of a long question, but just the goal is just like, were you intimidated by applying to USC? She said the acceptance rate's low and the average SAT score is high compared to other schools. So were you intimidated? And what advice do you have for students who may feel attending USC is almost an impossible dream? Um, yeah, I was intimidated. I was, I, I think I was even more intimidated because it was like my number one, like I really wanted to go here. So it was like, I don't know, it's a lot of pressure. Um, but I think I got lucky because I didn't have to take the SAT because mine, I applied like during COVID. Um, so like that really didn't matter. But the biggest thing is to be authentic be true to yourself when you apply, um, like really show your personality and your writing because like that, like that's, they're gonna, they wanna pick you. Like they wanna know who you are. They wanna know your story. So just like express yourself um, and show that you're like passionate and interested in coming to USC and really have like a good reason for like why USC and everything because that's gonna be really reflective. Um, so yeah, it was intimidated. Um, but I think I did a good job of like showcasing like who I am in my writing and in my application. So it worked out. 
Yeah, I would just say like applying to college in general is very intimidating. It's like a very scary process. And for me, like, I don't know if this is a, necessary, a technically like helpful mindset for, for you, but I was just like, at the end of the day, like they're either going to choose me or they're, they're not going to choose me. Like I could do my best to represent myself on the application, like make sure that I'm, I'm truthful to myself. But like at the end of the day, like if I do all that and like I don't get in, like I try my best. And I think like it's definitely like a scary mindset to have just that like you're like like a bunch of good people apply and like whatever happens happens. But it is true. And I think definitely when you kind of, of let go, like if you like I tried my best and like that's as good as I can get. Like it's, it's comfort, it was comforting to me to just be like, you know, like whatever happens, happens. I tried my best. Ah, yeah, okay. So Javon's hard. back with us. His audio is not working though. That's maybe the thing. I, I see that <laughs> if you're watching this at a later date on the podcast, this is an exasperated face by Javon right here. Um, he's giving me the one, the one signal. So in the meantime, I'll answer the question and then hopefully, you know, my long wittedness will give him enough chance to reconnect. Um, is it good now? Oh, it is. Wow. Okay. That was actually fast. Yeah. It, it's the CS in me. That was like, I had to fix. <laughs> he was yeah. back there, like... Okay. Um, <laughs> well, the question, uh, intimidated. Okay. Now what I was going to say, um, was first apologize for the disconnection and the technical yeah. issues and then go into, um, I second what Victoria and Kaylee said, um, about mostly being authentic and making sure that when you're applying, you're talking about your story um, and not trying to like fake any interest in things or be someone that you aren't. Um, because not only will like you make your best work when you're just talking about the things that you've experienced and the things that um, that interest you, uh, it's it's also just the fact that was no that was made earlier about the fact that USC wants to admit you and and see who you are. Um, and then the the fact that there are a bunch of other universities that will be a great opportunity for you. USC is an amazing time and has great resources, but other resources and other universities are also there to not get uh, too attached to one place. Yeah, I, I'd say for me, um, I definitely like, I, I try not to focus on the stats too much. Um, one thing I will say that will ease part of your question is that USC Viterbi, I think USC in general is test optional for this coming year. So if you are a current senior and you are applying for, you know, admission for next fall, you'd have to submit the SAT. Um, it doesn't impact you. Like the admissions office, I think they say like, it doesn't matter. Like you can send it if you want to. You don't have to send it if you don't want to. Like they don't really care. It's like, you know, unless you really, really want to send it, you have to, but otherwise like, don't worry about it. I really don't think it impacts like you get in or not. I really don't think so either. Um, but I think that certainly takes the pressure off of it. Um, but yeah, I'll agree like what a lot of said here, like being your authentic self is like, I don't really think there's any way like cheat code or getting around. There's like, we have an entire podcast. Like I think like the director of admission, like was talking about how to apply for the tribute. Like we'll link that towards the end. So you can get some more information, like from the people who read the applications about how to apply. But I'll just say in general, like it can be intimidating if you look at it from the sense of like, oh, I have to, you know, stand out and be all these other people. Um, but I feel like the application is just really to get to know you. Like there are people reading your essays and like they have compassion, they understand, and they're just trying to get to know you. And I found that in my application process, the schools that I got into were the schools that saw like my real unadulterated, like unfiltered self. It was the schools where I sat there and wondered like, oh, like what type of student am I, am I like convincing them they are? You know, I wanna like, and I would say like, well, I wanna show the school that I am this type of person. And like odd start, that just really wasn't who I was. And I didn't get into that school. Or I went through like five rounds of essay reviews and like stayed up all over winter break trying to like edit these essays for, you know, X Institute of Technology. And didn't work because I was just trying to be someone who I wasn't. And I feel like that's the main thing. And like, you can, you know, being intimidated by the questions, like it's it's natural just because like the school, you know, the admission rate is low. You know, there's a lot of great people who go here, but also like that doesn't even discount the fact that like you're a great person too. And odds are if you just apply and let them know and talk about your interest and your passion, that that's the best you can do. And like Victoria said, you know, it's the, you know, you're trying your best. It's not the end all be all, but it's just, you know, one step of the process. So I feel like, you know, just understanding that, you know, the best thing you control about your application is just what you did in high school, letting your passion show through. And that's really the best you can do. And, you know, you really can't expect to give yourself anything more. Not to mention, like, you know, we're like 17, 18, like it's not the end of the world, you know, what we have, what we do. So, you know, take a breather and it's not, it's all going to be okay. Let's see. Um, there actually is a question. So this is going to be interesting. I'm just going to broaden a little bit. 
Um, have you ever experienced like any type of discrimination um, on USC's campus? Like, there's no, it's a loaded question, but I feel like as black students, like, you know, it is an important one that we should answer nonetheless. So if you have, you know, feel free to talk about it as much or as little as you want to. This is, you know, your space. Um, but I think it is an important one. I mean, the, the one thing that comes to mind for me um, has been like there, there's been a, there's been a few times where I would like either be on a game day or like wearing some like USC related things. And I get the question of like, oh, like, are you an athlete or it'll be like a conversation will come up where it's like on scholarship and it'll be like, oh, like what sport do you play? And there's like that kind of microaggression stuff. Um, I feel like that would happen anywhere, unfortunately. And it's nothing that like cuts too deep, but I guess I'm also glad that that's all that has happened to me of memory. Um, yeah. Yeah, yes, I, don't know. I don't know. People call me the wrong name sometimes. <laughs> That's definitely, it's definitely weird, but it's not like like haunting my dreams at night. It happens to be in high school as well. So I think I <laughs> I got used to it, but it's just like a they feel pretty bad afterwards after I tell them that's not me. But yeah, a lot of that, but it's not that bad. Silver lining is I've, I haven't seen much that's overt. Um, I've, I, I've, I've had like, you know, as I, as I think about it, I've had probably like a one or two experiences of like, oh, like, can I touch your hair? Like, how, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, ah, okay. So <laughs> yeah. Or like, how'd you get your hair like that? And I'm yeah. like, oh. Oh my goodness, that happens so much. Like I like, I don't know, like when you wash your hair, like shrinkage happens or like it just comes down. So people are like, did you get a haircut? Um, <laughs> like, like the most egregious thing I've had is like, I've been at a football game and like some girl who was just like, not in her right frame of mind, just to put it like that. And just like we reached over and just like nabbed like a big chunk of my hair and just start like squishing. I was like, it's so, so like, that's like the most egregious thing that happened. That was like three years ago. Um, but yeah, yeah, like, it's it's like, always on the wash day. Like you hit, you oh. hit the like, yeah, every time I wash my hair, like today, you know, I stayed inside. I knew I wasn't going to get anything, but like, <laughs> it's dangerous. Yeah. Like what I'll have to do sometimes if I'm like in a bind, like I'll have to like do the wash and go at night and like wrap it in a do rag <laughs> and just like let it dry overnight. It's not as good as like a normal wash day, like air drying, but like it gets the job done. This all makes it sound much worse than it is. This is like, th this is exaggerated for the, for the intensive of telling the story here. Yes. Also like, this is like the only thing that's happened to me over the course of like three years, um, and like many a many a football game, many a tailgate, many a going to class, and like many a wash day, and it happened like three times over the course of three years. So I feel like one question a year is actually not that bad. But like Javon said, I feel like it's definitely like we're definitely lucky in the sense that like these are like the only things we really have to face. Like it could be certainly like so much worse. Um, like the things people could say or like do or assume. Um, and like the fact that just like microaggressions are still you know like not the best nonetheless, and there's like you know they're trying to improve it, but. You know, for it to be just things like that and nothing like moral burden, I definitely am like grateful it's not nothing too crazy. You know, one thing I'll add is that like it, if there's stuff that comes up um, at the university level or just like with with between students, like the university responses that I've seen, as well as like the responses that the black community and like BSA will put together have been like one very effective, but also like just the right things to say in those moments. Um, so like if there has been stuff that's come up um i like I've, I've seen good responses though rare um i i like how th stuff has been dealt with yeah i think plus like after the you know the whole uh the protest over 20 uh summer 2020 that really big thing like we got like like literally like five times the amount of space for the center for black culture and student yeah. affairs as a result um and whatnot so that that's like i guess a silver lining like it's like it's like huge now like we hold like you can hold a lot of meetings in there and plus, I think Viterbi had like a pretty good, like, you know, um, office. Like Viterbi definitely has like one of the better, like ro more robust offices for like providing resources. Like there is no center for business, not just like to crap on them, but like no center for business or diversity or center for, you know, like um, like uh, acting diversity or center for, you know, like, I don't know, what's the like design diversity. Like there's only like, it's literally the only one. And like, we have like a lot of programs I feel like that are kind of here to help us. So mm -hmm. I don't know. I feel like it's, there's definitely a lot more space to, you know, get help here than like most other places. So it definitely is better off than a lot. Um, yeah, actually the follow-up question to that, like what type of services like would they provide? Um, I guess it's like to the university or CED in general. Um, it's services from what, like the CED you said? 
Yeah, I guess like CED or like students, I guess like if you're dealing with something like how, like how would they go about it um, and whatnot, or like if you're dealing with like an issue. Um, yeah. I don't quite know. I think, I think of the CED mostly as like, oh, a, so, oh, okay, yeah, CBC. Not that processes. I mean, the, the Black Cultural Affairs Center thing. Um, yeah. So like, like what type of uh, services do they provide? Um, anyone want to talk about like, you know. Um, I believe, oh, sorry. No, I just asked. I think they have problem. like, like staff on on site i remember i just went to an event and they were speaking there i was like oh they have staff like for mental health things and then i know they they have like general big events like i know there's an event coming up i think it's like this week or something where it's like a summit where it's like an entire day devoted to like black womanhood creating sisterhood and then also like mental health resources i forgot exactly what it's called i think it's like sisters in solidarity or something but they have like big events like that and then they also have staff yeah there's like a lot of resources so like um like she mentioned like the staff there. there's like a there's a full like a uh, center director and there's another one who's like i forget his title maybe like associate director or something but like they're there and you know they're typically busy like trying to make sure there's like resources for students but like they'll provide that space like there's um for example there's a series going on there's like a it's like a hundred thousand dollar grant we received from some company and there's a series called black health as well and so like it's a series of events happening like every week every other week in the center for in the like this the black student center that's my nickname for it because the name is long and cbcsa <laughs> has a lot of acronyms then the black student center there's a lot of research there's a lot of like that's going on and just a variety of other cultural events going on there like i literally there's a i got a free book um that was like like the, the hundred like the 50-day guide to like uh, mental health as a black man going on in there um Beyond that, like, I think that just having that space is, like, pretty crucial. I mean, you can always, like, talk to any of the people there. Additionally, like, uh, organizations such as, like, uh, CIS and BBB, so CIS is Sisters in Solidarity. Uh, it's, like, a, essentially, like, a collective on campus for, like, uh, for Black women, femme, identifying and non-binary, and uh, identifying students kind of have a safe space. And then there is uh, BBB, which is Brothers Breaking Bread, which is, like, barriers, regrets, like, uh, attitudes, um, egos, and, um, like, destructive masculinity. It's essentially a group to like, you know, for like these different like, you know, groups to kind of come together and like provide that safe space there. And that's typically hosted at either like the First Gym Student Center or the Black Student Center. And they're really great ways just to like find that community. And so a lot of times, like there are a lot of concrete resources I can't name and we can actually like, you know, show you um, about it in there like on their um, website and whatnot. But just a lot of like more so like providing that space to talk to people. And then maybe you talk about it to someone and that's that person knows. So that's definitely kind of like a lot of the form that the resources happen at USC. Yeah, I agree with that. Like, just like knowing that you can go in there and like there will be someone there that you can speak to um, is like really, really helpful and reassuring. Ditto, ditto that. Um, yeah, so it looks like we're kind of coming towards the end of our time. So I do want to ask um, one last question. It's uh, very corny, but I just want to know you guys, like, why did you pick USC? And since some of you guys, you know, we have some sophomores, juniors and seniors here, why did you decide to stay at USC? Am I allowed to ask the or answer the the why I came here, Cameron? <laughs> no, Javon, you're not. No, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. All right. Um, yeah. No, I I think part of my answer for why I came is is related to my major in the terms of like there weren't many places that offer computer science and business in the I'll say quote unquote easy way um, that uh, Viterbi does. In fact, that like it's a program. Um, but I had the chance to come to campus. I don't know, maybe my junior year of high school. Um, and take a tour and got a chance to meet some students. Um, and while I was there, I could already kind of see the black community and how connected they were. Um, my mom and I were lost at a parking lot, like looking for a parking lot and just happened to stumble across a, a, the director of the CBCSA at the time, um, who- Oh my goodness. Yeah, <laughs> who was just like, <laughs> yeah, just like, hey, this, this is where the parking lot is at. Like, and she seemed in a rush and she's like, oh, I'm actually going to BSA right now. Like gave us this whole little spiel and just wanted to help us out. Um, I, that, that same time I got the chance to meet, uh, one of the like current Nesby members who was telling me that I think like the year before they won national chapter of the year, either like at some point recently, which is a huge deal. Um, so I can already tell that like, if, <laughs> if I were to, to come to campus, I would like have a community to join into inside engineering, just the black community at SC. Um, and from what I saw, it was a community that I wanted to be a part of, um, which on top of the academic stuff, on top of my major um, and, and the resources that I saw, that was definitely a big aspect of what pushed me to, to decide. Yeah, I have a very similar story to Javon. Like I said earlier, I'm from Inglewood, 
And I'm like, this, this is like six miles away. And I was like, I'm not going to USC. I'm leaving Los Angeles. <laughs> like they will never see me <laughs> ever again. But I actually, I came here for an admissions event that we have in November called Explore. And I got to talk to, um, a, the, they have like club fair and I got to talk to the National Society of Black Engineers there. And they were like so welcoming to me. I was like a little scared high schooler. And they like came over there, talked to me, asked me questions and just told me so much about their chapter. And I could see like from there, like in that conversation that they were really like kind, welcoming, supportive, but also really passionate about USC and the community that they built at NESI. And like, like I mentioned earlier, I really wanted to go to a place where I would have like the supportive community. And I saw there that USC could be that place for me. And why I stayed here, I think just because I found that supportive community and I found people that want to, you know, um, invest in me. Like I said um, earlier, in my introduction, I'm on like the regional executive board for um, National Society of Black Engineers. And that was only something that I knew about because an older um, upperclassman Nesby member was like, oh, you're gonna be on the regional executive board with me next year. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> and now I'm like the chair of the board. So I definitely think like people have looked out for me and like thought of opportunities for me and pushed me. And that's really what's kept me here and kept me happy here. Yeah, for me, um, it was, yeah, I, I was like very against going to school in LA. I was like, it's too big, it's too much. Um, Cause I come from like a sort of a small like agricultural city. So I was like, oh, the big city, it's too much. Um, yet yeah, here I am. But I remember like coming to like um, a USC event, like the, a tour um, and just like immediately falling in love with the campus because because of the students, because I got to like meet and interact with the students. Um, and it was like one of the only schools that had like astronautical engineering specifically, like not aerospace, but astronautical, because I knew that I was more interested in the space sector. Um, and then like going to like the events like this, like I went to like quite a few live chats because I was still very unsure about everything. And like getting to see people talk and like meet the students um, before I came here was like really, really helpful because I got to hear about all their experiences and hear about why they love the school and they all seem to really, really love the school. So I was like, whoa, if it's, if they all really love it, then I should go there too, so. Yeah, and for me, I think like the common thread we see with a lot of these things are the people that make USC. So I'll tell a very quick story because um, I know it's coming in an hour. Um, but essentially, when I came to USC, like it was for the Explorer um, USC event that Victoria was talking about. It was the interview for a scholarship. And I'm on the line, like, wow, this is a whole lot of money on the line. Like, I really need to get this because this will help me get to USC. And I was nervous wreck. I was in a three-piece suit, just like sweating. It's like hot, <laughs> like 90 degrees in February. I'm like, what kind of crazy place is this? And I'm sitting in the dining hall. I'm like a nervous wreck. It's like 8 a.m. on a Friday or a Friday morning. And these three kids approached me and I'm like, oh, Lord, what's going to happen? And these three kids like, hey, are you like, like here for a scholarship? And I'm like, how do they know? Like, are they going to kick me out? I'm like, yes. And like, mind you, these are not black students. They're like very much majority students. You know, there's PWI students. Like, this is what it is. And I was like, what's going to happen? And they're like, oh, yeah. Like, what's the ask me? Like, what's school are you in for? And I said, maturity. And said, oh, we're all maturity. There's like mechanical, computer science, electrical dude there. And like, they just sat down and started talking to me. They're like, oh, you know, you're here for the scholarship or you're here for like, you know, oh, you're here on the interview. Like, where are you from? You know, are you like, you seem a little nervous. And they just started calming me down. They're like, hey, you got this. You already got in. So that's congrats, you know, like telling me to calm down, you know, get into the interview. And walking away is like, I was like, good. It's not like, you know, seven, 10 minute walk from the village dining hall to where the engineering interview was. And I sat there and I was just like, wow, like these students, like they're not black. They have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just some nervous like high schooler who's like 17 sitting in this dining hall, like with his suit on, trying to get his, you know, eat his food before his interview. And they came over and out the kindness of the heart they wanted to help me out and calm me down and nerve and like, you know, kind of reduce my nerves. And I think that kind of showed me what type of place this is where people are passionate, they care about for one another, they, you know, are willing to kind of go the little extra way to do it. And I've seen that through for the past three years. And that's certainly why I've stayed here. Um, but with that, uh, thank you guys for answering the questions. Uh, we're going to hop back into our slideshow and just provide a little bit more information about some resource how to stay connected, and then we'll get you guys out of here.
So Viterbi Admission Information Sessions, uh, if you would like to sign up for an information session with the Viterbi Undergraduate Admission Officers, these are the people who actually read your application, you're more than welcome to sign up on that link on the screen. It's viterbiadmission.usaeu slash events slash hashtag on campus. You can find uh, sign up for a chat both in person and virtual, as well as you can actually email them questions at theadmit at usc.edu. Great resource to check out. Additionally, here are a variety of resources that we talked about um, right here. USC's Black Student Assembly, we talked about it. Um, that's the Instagram there. You can keep up with us at Nesby underscore USC. You guys understand right now, this is basically a Nesby love fest. We love Nesby. Uh, at USC underscore Viterbi underscore CED is the Instagram for the Center for Engineering University. It's a great um, place that we talked about before, you know, provide a different resource and this place for students on campus. And finally, USC's Black and Alumni Association, which is at USCBAA. This is actually a really great resource because they provide a variety of programming as well as a scholarship um, grant opportunity for students um, who are at USC, get connected with Black alumni who are in the LA area in your major um, and provide a really good mentor um, atmosphere. So these are all great resource and organizations to um, keep a lookout for. Uh, next, here's our live chat calendar. So if you're interested in more live chats, we have more. Um, on October 9th is our Latinx student engineering live chat. It's a great place to, to identify if you're a Latin, Latin or Latinx identifying student, you can in a similar form to in this one, hear from current Latinx students about their experience as Latinx students here at USC. And then on October 30th is our Viterbi Voices live chat, which is essentially everything, all, all people, all backgrounds, all majors, anything you think of, this is the live chat um, to do it there. Um, if you want to register for these live chats and get information for that, or view any of our past live chats, we've had live chats about women in engineering, another general live chat, a live chat about meeting the majors, you can register at the turbiadmission.usc.edu slash events slash hashtag live chats. If you want more information and reminders about these live chats, you can follow us on Instagram. We are at the Turby student. Um, that's a great place to keep, keep up with everything. Some more resources. Uh, check out the Viterbi student website. We are at Viterbi, or the website is viterbivoices.usc.edu. It's not an Instagram handle, it's a website. You can read blogs, find links to our podcasts, our like Instagram handle, our Twitter, to all these other places. Really great information. Just find content made by students for students. If you want to learn more about the academics and the research opportunities about USC Viterbi undergrad, you can go to viterbiundergrad.usc.edu. And finally, if you want to explore our campus, the uh, USC admissions office, like the general admissions office, has a great place to explore our campus. You can take both an in-person and a virtual tour. Just look at campus. Campus is beautiful. I really enjoy doing it. So make sure to uh, book a virtual in-person tour if you can. As a reminder, um, this year, USC has an early action deadline. This deadline is November 1st. This deadline is the deadline to submit by if you would like to be considered for merit-based scholarships. These include full, half, and quarter tuition scholarships. New York's your paperwork, you literally just submit your application by November 1st. Would highly recommend everyone do it. You never want to turn down free money. Apply by November 1st. And finally, stay connected with us. Um, we are at the Turby Student on all the socials. We have an Instagram, a YouTube channel where we tried some very, very spicy hot wings, uh, a Twitter, and a <laughs> recently from Javon, and a TikTok. We do make TikToks. They're actually pretty funny. I think we had like 40,000 views at one time. I'm doing a shameless plug, um, but definitely check that out there. Also, we have a podcast. It's the Turby Voices, the podcast. This is actually the number one podcast in America if you search USC the Turby. Uh, great place to check it out. Sorry for my joke. It didn't land well, but definitely check out the podcast. It's like the eighth season and there's like 200 questions, uh, episodes on it so far. And finally, if you have a question that wasn't answered, you just want to ask at a later date, email us at vstudent at usc.edu. Um, great place. You get it answered from a student just like us. Um, and with that, I want to thank you guys for tuning into the live chat. Uh, stay safe. Have a great week um, whenever you're listening to this. Thank you. Have a good evening. And as always, bye to all. Bye to all. Bye to all.